No, I'm not gonna post that vlog that I have. I don't know, this is embarrassing to say pages. It's pretty bad, guys. Oh my gosh. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I probably look ridiculous right now because I'm wearing this big puffy, I don't even know what to call this, pullover sweatshirt, I don't know. But we just got back from the store. We went grocery shopping or we ran some errands today. So we just got back from running some errands and it is so, so cold outside. 
and windy. When I bought this a couple years ago, I thought I'm never going to be able to wear it because if you live in Vegas, it doesn't really get that cold here. But lately, every year now has been getting colder and colder. And so I guess I'm happy that I can wear it. Anyways, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Welcome to another weekly vlog. I have a lot of things to do this week because this is the week of Thanksgiving. So we have a few things going on. Obviously we have Thanksgiving and we also have a little mini road trip planned that I'm so excited about. We're gonna be driving to Flagstaff, Arizona and we're gonna be going to Santa's workshop with the kids. So I will be tagging you guys along with that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get a lot of reading done that day or that weekend, but I will try. Let me go ahead and share with you what I'll be reading this week. So I'm happy to say that I did finish A Study in Drowning and I did finish, what was the other book I was reading? Oh, Throne of Glass. I did finish those last week, which I'm super excited about. And this week I am reading You Again by Kate Goldbeck. And I've also decided that I was gonna start reading Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. So let's talk about You Again. I am on page 275 on chapter 20. Almost done with the book, I feel like, at this point. I am confident that I might be able to finish it in this vlog and I'm happy about it. And I'm so excited that I picked this up because it's a nice little break from all the fantasy that I've been reading lately. So that makes me excited. This book, I'm also listening to it on audio and it's perfect. I love it. I'm actually really, really, really enjoying it. If you didn't know what this book is about, this book follows Ari and Josh and they meet under very unique circumstances they find out that they're actually sleeping with the same woman from there off the bat they don't get along they don't like each other at all they despise each other i'm gonna tell you something right now i really love this book even though it's really lengthy it's like literally 400 and something pages i love the banter that they have going on i love how ari the main character is free spirit and she you know doesn't believe in love and doesn't believe in committing and doesn't want to be in a committed relationship and she's more of like a one-time one-night stand type of girl and josh is more of the hopeless romantic he's very uptight and he's very grumpy but in the best way because you know deep inside deep down he's not as bad as he seems out to be like i said he's a hopeless romantic he believes in love he wants to find his one true love to start his life with and ari is more on the i just want to have fun type of attitude years later as they're both reeling from ego bruising breakups a chance encounter leads to a surprising connection friendship Turns out spending time with your former nemesis is fun when you're too sad to hate each other. They didn't start off on the right foot when they met and because of that, they became nemesis, they despised each other, didn't like each other, but for some reason, every so often after three years, it seems like, every three years, they seem to run into each other, bump into each other until they both kind of find themselves in their lives going through a really bad breakup. They kind of form this friendship together in order to cope with what they're going through with their relationships. They form a friendship and the story goes from there. And I'm telling you right now, it's so good. Their banter is so good. She is so hilarious. She's very sarcastic. She's very just bluntly funny and he's more uptight and almost feels like he has a stick up his ass, but it's just so good because they're so perfect for each other. There's a scene in here that made me crack up so much where it's New Year's Eve and they bump into each other and of course they hate each other, but she's, you know, she's very funny about it. And she's like, maybe next year we'll share a toast at the end of the year. And he's like, I think not, we will never do that. And she's like, or maybe we can share girlfriends again. And I just thought that was so funny the way she said that. And he's like, what? And she's like, kidding, I'm just kidding. I thought that was so hilarious. When I find the part I'll read it to you guys, I love it. I didn't expect to love this book so much, but I do. You should definitely read it. It takes place in the fall, New Year's, Christmas season, so it's perfect for the time of weather right now. It's perfect for the season right now. I feel like I'm reading it super fast because it's just, again, a nice little break from what I'm reading currently. And yeah, I have hopes that I will finish this in this vlog. Wish me luck, but that's where I'm at with you again. Also, I decided to start 
Iron Flame. Now, I had a whole vlog on Fourth Wing, and I'm not going to go over the synopsis of Fourth Wing, but in short, this is the second book to that series, and I think it's called the Empyrean series, if I'm saying it right. If you didn't know what Fourth Wing was about, Fourth Wing is basically about a war school of dragons. You follow this girl named Violet, who is very... I think she has a mental condition that makes her very frail and fragile. There's four quadrants in this school and she has always studied and worked hard to be in the scribe section but her mother because her mother is a dragon rider and she's the commander of the school or something like that she decides that she's going to force her daughter into the i think it's called the dragon's rider quadrant if i'm not mistaken <laughs> Don't come at me if I'm saying all the terms wrong, okay? But I think her mother forces her into that quadrant and it's basically a school to become a dragon rider. And if you do become a dragon rider, you basically are sent to war. She's this frail little girl who has no intentions of becoming a dragon rider, but she's forced into it by her mom. It's such a cool concept and it's such a cool storyline, not only because there's dragons involved, but in the story, you don't get to choose a dragon, the dragon chooses you. and if the dragon doesn't choose you, you either die trying to train to be a dragon rider and become a dragon rider and get chosen by one or you'll die trying or they'll disintegrate you. So it's very interesting. But like I said, I had this whole vlog on it and I just didn't want to sound negative. I don't bash books, but I didn't really have a great top of the line enjoyment for the first book in the series. I gave it a three star being generous and I'm just going to leave it at that. And no, I'm not going to post that vlog that I have because I just don't want to air out a vlog of me just not talking highly negative but talking enough to worry someone would be annoyed especially a person that really likes the series long story short when i purchased fourth wing it took me two months because it was so hyped it took me two months to get it in my hands and when i started it i pre-ordered the second book in the series which is iron flame without having read fourth wing and so i just decided to keep my order and i'm happy i did because i got the copy i wanted with the sprayed black edges i'm on page 80. i will say that this one i'm I'm not going to read you the back because I don't want to give anything away, but this one actually goes more into politics. It goes more into the world building and it's going more into the classes that they're attending now. I thought I would not like that. I thought I would not enjoy it because for some reason I didn't think so, but I am finding myself enjoying it. I am reading it super slow though. I'm taking my sweet time. I'm making sure that I'm paying attention. More characters are being introduced. More politics are being discussed and I just want to make sure I fully understand everything about it so that the reading experience for this is much more enjoyable at this point but i will say even though it's as slow as it is and even though it's a bigger book and i'm only on page 80 and it does literally take me i don't know this is embarrassing to say maybe 20 to 30 minutes to read maybe like five or six pages it's pretty bad guys like i've read it so slow because i'm constantly tabbing things i'm constantly keeping track of things because i know it's going to be essential throughout the book and if i don't understand it now what's to say i'm going to understand it later and actually enjoy the book but i will say so far because i've already read fourth wing and i kind of know what rebecca yarrow's writing is for this series and i already know that some parts are cringy i'm already used to it so it doesn't bother me it's not a shock i actually do enjoy the fact that there's just more details in it if that makes sense so i'm enjoying it and i will say who knows maybe i will enjoy this one more maybe i'll become a lover of this series but so far my experience with this one anyways has been a lot better than the last one and i also miss the dragons and the involvement of the dragons and the world within itself i miss that i miss the banter between the characters so again i'm enjoying myself i know this is gonna be a slow read for me am i gonna finish this book in this vlog absolutely not at the pace that i'm going i think this book will probably roll over onto december if i'm being honest with you but i'm okay with that because i am reading books in between so that's where we're at as far as iron flame goes those are my reading up updates for right now and I'm actually very excited because I just got a notification from my Libby app that I think it's called Into the Woods is already available and that's another book that I really wanted to read this month. I feel like I'm doing really good with my reading actually. I'm actually really really proud. Right now I'm making lunch for the kids. We're gonna have lunch. We ran some errands this weekend. We also ran some more errands. 
did some more grocery shopping. I got a new Christmas mug, which I'll share with you later. I love it so much. That's it for now. I have a few packages coming in this week, so that's gonna be exciting. I might do some unboxings with you guys. I might do a little mini book haul. And I also wanna go to Barnes <laughs> because I wanna buy this one specific Christmas book, so. We might do that in this vlog. Who knows? We'll see. So I got some packages. It's now the towards the end of the day. It's 4 p.m. I got some packages that I want to open and unbox with you guys. So the other day I bought, I ran out of my eye cream from Glow Recipe, so I bought it through Sephora. And I also bought a new makeup melting balm from Glow Recipe as well. I don't know if it's called a makeup scrub or whatever, but it's a makeup melting balm. <laughs> it's like a one of those things that melts that melts your makeup. So I ended up getting that and I also ended up adding the, I think this is the limited edition Laneige Divine Lip Duo set. How cute is this? The only thing with this though is that I thought and in the picture it looked a lot bigger. It looked a lot bigger than it than it is and so it's annoying when they do these holiday sets because you feel like you're getting duped, you know? The picture looks bigger than what it really is. But I got that. And I think it's a limited edition because it comes with the Peppermint Lip Sleeping Mask. You can see. And it smells really good. I like anything minty, you know, peppermint, mint. And so I'm sure my daughter will love it too. And then it comes with the Berry Fruits Rouge Lip Glowy Balm. There we go. So I like that. I'm definitely going to get a use out of those. This is the brand that I like to use for my lips. I think it's really good and actually very picky when it comes to lip balms because not all of them work. So it's one of those things where I know what I like. And so I also had some points. So they sent me some samples of things. First sample is this Libre perfume spray from Vest Saint Laurent. We can see. I'm probably not pronouncing it right. And let's see how it smells. Oh, I didn't even have to pull it out. Oh. It smells very floral. I don't like that. I'm also very picky with scents. I don't know if I like that at all, actually. I had some points racked up because I almost never shop for anything at Sephora. Just when I literally run out of something is when I actually shop. So maybe couple times a year like I'm not a big spender on makeup or anything like that I was able to choose from things so I chose this smooth hair starters kit from living proof and I'm actually really excited about this because it's their anti-frizz line I'm actually super excited about this I like this brand it comes with the frizz shampoo and conditioner a little mini travel size which I'm bummed because again in the picture it looks like it's full size but I mean wishful thinking, right? This is perfect though for when we go to Santa's workshop trip, so I'm excited. Then it comes with the anti-frizz smooth styling cream, which I'm actually very excited about that. And then it comes with the living proof anti-defrizzer smooth and teams frizz. I don't really have a lot of frizz, but I have enough to where it bugs me. So this will be perfect. Now that I'm done sharing that, let's move on to the good stuff. Let's move on to all the Christmas books I got. That I forgot to mention. I told you earlier that I got books. I just forgot to mention that they were all Christmas books because I am such a mood reader that during the holidays I like to read holiday themed books. In December is literally a month full of just Christmas reads. That's all I read is Christmas reads. But it's going to be interesting this year because I am getting into a lot of fantasy and I do want to read a lot of fantasy books. So I'll see how I like am able to juggle everything because of course I want to read a lot of books in December but realistically I'll probably only read six if I'm lucky. So the first one is A Winter in New York by Josie Silver. How cute is this book? A young chef stumbles upon a secret family recipe that might lead her to the love and life she's been looking for. How cute! So that's the first one. I bought like six books okay don't judge me. And there's one more I want to get. 
at Barnes. These are all kind of chunky books and I also am very picky when it comes to picking out Christmas books. I hardly buy any novellas, not to say that I won't, but they have to be very specific for me to buy them because they're full priced. And then I also, when it comes to Christmas books, I do like to buy the longer books just because I feel like I'm getting my money's worth, if that makes any sense. So the first book is part of a series of three books and this is the first one and I don't know if it's a standalone series but they're a bunch of romance Christmas books. I was going to read the second book but somebody said that you should read the first book because then it just follows into the second book with the next set of characters so I'm doing that. And this one is called A Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgan Taylor. Something like that. Isn't it cute? And these are all romance Christmas books. They take place in Alaska. So small town, Alaska, got the winter cold vibes. I'm very excited. It says, a unique voice and a grumptastic hero. I'm sold. And that is quoted by Sabrina Bowen. He had a strict no tourist policy until she broke all his rules. Fresh, fun, and romantic. That's really all I really need to know. It's probably about her. She's a tourist. He's trying not to promote his small town or something like that. I don't know. But it's super cute. I love how it feels too. I love how floppy it is. So maybe I will read it this year. <laughs> On top of everything else I, that I'm going to read. Um, the next one I've heard great things. This one's called A Cross Country Christmas. And this is about childhood friends to lovers. And I think she's had a crush on him her entire life. And he has never noticed until they get stuck taking this road trip together. And then the story goes from there. A story of forgiveness, hope, and enduring ties that proves it's never too late for a second chance. So a second chance romance, maybe. Childhood friends to lovers. And the cover is so cute. This one's by Courtney Walsh. This one is on the shorter side, but again, I've heard great things about this one. It's only 240 pages, so it's kind of like in between an actual novel and a novella. I am very picky. I also pick books not only on what they're about as far as the Christmas books go, but I like to pick them based on their covers. Because if I'm gonna own Christmas books that I'll probably read once a year, I want the covers to be cute, if that makes any sense. So the next one is part of a series too, and I think this is like a sports hockey romance, but it's set in Christmas time. And this one's called A Little Magic by Lindsay Lanza. And this one is, I think, a second chance romance, friends to lovers, and he's had a crush on her his entire life. Nine years to fall in love, eight nights to learn the truth, one chance to rewrite the past. This one sounds like it would be an emotional one, but I'm here for it. It does have dual POV. That is awesome. I like, does it have dual POV? All I see is, oh yeah, it does. So that's very exciting. I like when it's dual POV. Let me see if the other ones have that. I didn't even check. So this one does not, and this one does not, and <laughs> this one does not either. That's okay. At least I got one book that does. Okay, and then the last book is actually a novella. I know I just said I don't really purchase novellas, but this one I had to have because not only heard good things about it, I think it came out last year, and when I saw it, I didn't want to read the Kindle Unlimited version. I wanted to get the physical copy just because the cover is stunning, but it also takes place in a bookstore. Like In any book that takes place in a bookstore, I need to get, okay? I need to add that on my shelf. So this one is The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lees. Look how pretty this cover is. That is so pretty. I love the colors that they use on this. This is obviously a novella. It is only 179 pages, so you know that this is probably one of the first Christmas books I'm gonna read. This one I think is about a girl who owns a bookstore and their enemies to lovers, I think. From the author of the Bergen Brothers series comes a slow burn enemies to lovers holiday romance perfect for fans of The Hating Game and You've Got Mail. The Hating Game is one of my all-time favorite romance books ever. I mean, I have to read this. So that's really all I need to know. And let me see. It's so cute. It looks like every page, every chapter, if you see, is based off of a playlist. Like chapter four says playlist, Little Jack Frost, Get Lost, Bing Crosby, and Peggy Lee. Basically on classic Christmas songs, which is my favorite. If I'm going to listen to Christmas songs, most of my playlist is just a bunch of classics like French Sinatra, Nat Cole, all those. That is my little haul. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope I did not bore you too much. I just wanted to share. Oh, and obviously I have this one too. 
Tessa Bailey's Wreck the Halls, which I talked about this on one of my other vlogs, but this is also part of my Christmas stack. I'm going to probably listen to you again on audio while I fold some laundry and then pretty much settle in. We also just have a broken water heater right now. <laughs> it keeps turning off, so hopefully we can just switch it back on and take showers tonight because the fact that we don't have hot water in the cold winter nights is not great. So I hope the lighting is okay. Happy Tuesday. I kind of have a little bit of an update, a reading update for you. I just got done filming a video for you guys, which I'm hoping I'm going to post the day after Thanksgiving while we're on our little mini Christmas family trip. Last night, I didn't really get to read much. When I'm doing these vlogs, I have to balance between am I getting enough reading done versus editing and vlogging and doing all that. But nonetheless, I love what I'm doing. I love what I do. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. Anyways, before I get off topic, I've been finding it really challenging. Now it's not the kids going to bed at a decent time so that I can get most of my reading done at night. I have that now. I'm spoiled with it. But now when I lay in bed and I try to read Iron Flame or my other book, I just can't because I get too comfortable, too cozy, and I just end up falling asleep, especially if I'm listening to like rain music in the background. It just doesn't work. So with that being said, yesterday I did not read an ounce of you again. We were busy all day. I did not get to do that. I did between yesterday and this morning because I find myself being able to only read Iron Flame in the morning when I'm at my brightest, when I have my most energy before I work out and tackle on the day. I've been reading this in the mornings with my coffee because I have to pay attention to it. And at night I typically listen to you again because that's more of a you know, it's a contemporary romance, so it doesn't really need my undivided attention. So with that being said, I tried to read a little bit of this last night, maybe got to two pages, and then I read some more this morning. And typically when I read up to 100 pages, like if I'm on page, you know, I think yesterday I was on page 84 and I hit page 100. I like to celebrate. I like to like pat myself on the back because I hit the 100 page mark, even if it took me a couple days. So I did hit my 100 page mark. And if you can see, it's right there. And I feel I did hit it this morning in a span of a couple of days. So it's not like I read 100 pages. I wish. I'm excited because it just means I only have 500 more pages to go before I finish the book. <laughs> before I finish the book, but that's okay. I feel like that, you know, I just hit a little milestone in this book, especially because I have to pay attention to it a lot, which will say I'm not hating the book, which is good. I'm not having the same feelings or experience when I was reading Fourth Wing, which is kind of a fresher breath there. So I'm kind of used to Rebecca Yarrow's writing as far as this series goes. Since I'm used to it, I don't mind the slower parts. I don't mind the cringiness of some of the dialogue between the characters. I don't mind any of that. I'm actually really enjoying it. And to me, it's not boring at all. 
that makes any sense. But I can also do slow burn romances. I think I prefer slow burn romances over quick and fast action paced ones because I fall more in love with the world and the characters that way, if that makes any sense. Anyways, stay tuned for my video. Well, I'm saying stay tuned, but this video is probably going to be aired afterwards. You guys will see my Christmas book recommendation video that I'll be posting in the next couple of days, which I'm excited about. I decided to wear lipstick and be a little festive for you guys because I am wearing a ton of blush, so hopefully that doesn't show too much in the camera and I don't look like a clown. I'm very excited for you guys to see that video. I had a lot of fun filming it. I'm done doing that. I finally have that checked off the list. Now I just have to work on editing this vlog just to keep up with it so it's not like a disaster and a nightmare once I'm finally finished at the end of the week. And I also just want to read today. Um, I want to just catch up on reading. I want to read a little more of you again and I'd like to make a little bit more of a dent in this but we'll see. I will update you next time I have a thought or an opinion on my reading. Hi. It is 1.52. I have had such a crazy busy morning. Excuse my microwave. I've had such a crazy busy morning. First things first, I read a little bit this morning. Then we had to go pick up our Thanksgiving food for tomorrow. We're hosting my parents. My parents are coming over and we're going to have Thanksgiving dinner with them. We usually pay for pre-made catered food for Thanksgiving just because we did cook Thanksgiving one year. It was great. It was delicious, but it just took all day long. The cleanup was just horrific for us. Even though I clean as I go, we spent most of the day just hovering over the ovens and cleaning up after the messes and not really relaxing and we just feel like it's not worth it so for thanksgiving since we are a smaller family we just like to order catered food invite my parents over and we just have a great night with some good food so that's what we did so we went got the food came back home i have this big tub that we buy from costco of cranberry sauce because i love cranberry sauce like i'll put it in e anything and everything i can but especially when i'm like having my little charcuterie snacks i like to put cranberry sauce on top of that i know some of you might think it's gross but i like it turns out after i worked out this morning i was calling my dad and i ended up dropping the tub all over the floor all over the fridge all over the cabinet all over the wall so I thought to myself, you know what, after we cleaned it up, me and my husband, I'm like, I wasn't thinking about cleaning the house today or this week because we're going to be going out of town, but I might as well just clean the house while I'm at it. So that's basically how my morning's going. I'm in my PJs right now. I finally took a shower after running around. I'm currently doing laundry. I changed my kids' bed sheets. We just bought them some cute Christmas bed sheets. I'm so excited, they look so good on their beds. I'm gonna have my lunch now and thank gosh that my dad brought me leftover food the other day because I'm heating that up. I'm gonna have my lunch and I'm going to go clean the house so that tomorrow we don't have to do anything and just have a quiet Thanksgiving family breakfast and then at night we'll have dinner with my parents. I figured I could just do all that now so that maybe all I have to worry about is just spending time with my family tomorrow and possibly packing because I'm a last minute packer because I hate it so much. The good thing about that though is I will be listening to the audio version of you again and I might possibly just finish it. It does take me three hours, around three hours to clean the entire house. And I also have laundry to put away. So with that being said, that's basically what I'm gonna be doing. I'm going to be productive, I'm gonna clean the house, do some laundry, and I'm gonna listen to the audiobook. And hopefully, when I check back in with you guys, I will be finished with that book or almost done with that book. Okay, so this is probably not the best lighting for my face. <laughs> 
but I wanted to be festive and include the Christmas tree in the background so you are awkwardly mounted up against my couch cushion and hopefully I don't move too much to where you're going to fall. Oh, and my battery is dying, so hold that thought. Much better. New battery, still very bad lighting though because I just want to include a Christmas tree in the background, okay? That's why. Okay, so I feel very productive today. Like I said earlier, I wanted to clean the house because I didn't want to worry about doing anything tomorrow, and I did that. I had enough time to clean the house, still doing laundry, still folding some laundry, don't really have a lot of laundry left to do tomorrow, which is really nice. I just feel very productive, you guys. Like, I feel super productive. I took a little break from editing. I'm editing the Christmas book recommendation video that I told you guys about that I wanted to post the day after Thanksgiving. So I'm working on that and I decided to take a little break so that I can talk to you guys about, other than just cleaning the house, what else I've accomplished. I'm really happy because I actually did end up finishing You Again by Kate Goldbeck. I gave this book a five star. It was such a good book. I love the banter. I love the romance. I love that it wasn't perfect, that both characters had their own different issues that they were going through as far as trying to be in a relationship. I loved everything about this book. It kind of took me by surprise because I had no idea that I was gonna love this book so much, as much as I did. I'm just so glad that I read it just because my experience with this book was that good and I highly, highly recommend that you guys read it. Again, it was just a very solid five-star read, especially for romance. It was really, really good. I can't say enough that I'm just so shocked and impressed on how good it was. And the narrator narrating the book, she just was perfect, especially when she was narrating Ari, the main character's part. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading the audiobook of it. As much as I've said before in the past where I don't really enjoy listening to romance books through audio, I think it either makes it or breaks it for me depending on who narrates the book. So I'm highly sold on the fact that I can basically also listen to romance books, not just thrillers and fantasies, as long as the narrator is good. And this one was amazing. So highly recommend. You guys need to read it. It's so good. Even though it's 400 and something pages, it was a quick read for me because it was just that interesting. Just everything, guys. Just everything. Just trust me. You need to read it. So with that being said, I ended up picking up and all these books that I've read so far have been on my TBR except for Iron Flame. But this one I put on my TBR and it came available on my Libby app. The audio version of it came available on my Libby app a couple days ago. So I had to pick it up. I had to start reading it. That is After the Forest by Kel Woods. I love this Illumi Crate Edition by the way. It is so beautiful. The lighting right now is not doing it justice. But I'm sure you guys have seen my unboxing video for this. I think this was the September box. Either September or October, one of those. I think it was September. I don't know. I don't remember, but nonetheless, it's beautiful. And I'm not really far into it. Again, I am listening to the audio version of it. This is actually a Hansel and Gretel retelling, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just pull up my Libby app. I'm literally only 4% into it. Not not that far. It's okay right now. The story is being introduced. We're following Greta. She lives in the forest because she is known to be a witch because what happened to her back then. People in this world believe in witches, but they believe that they're not good. So Greta has the reputation of being a witch because nobody believed that the woman, her and her brother pushed into the oven, which was the witch of the original story of Hansel and Gretel, was actually a witch. And so people frowned that upon Greta and kind of blame the fact that she's a witch who could have possibly killed an innocent old woman. Oh, I just got an email from Lumacrete that they shipped my order. That's very exciting. Anyways, that's as far as I am in the book. So not really far because it's only, I'm literally only 4% in the book. I hope I enjoy this enough to take it on my mini family road trip that we're going to have after Thanksgiving because if I don't enjoy it, I also have that horror book that's also another Illumicrate edition and it's the last to leave the room and it's a sci-fi horror novel and that one's also available on my Libby app. So I have options. I have a lot of options and that's really good. And also I have noticed that having books placed on hold on my Libby app 
as far as audiobooks go has kind of forced me to stick with my TBR in a good way. I'm not burnt out and I'm enjoying these books. Had I not had the audio versions of these books available, I would have still read them but not been kind of pushed to read them sooner than later and also I probably would have read them a lot slower. Iron Flame, I tried to read through the audio and I just don't like the narrator on the book. I just don't like her narrating the book. Out of everybody, they picked that person to narrate it, which I have nothing against her personally. It's just when you start listening to an audiobook and you just can't stand the narrator, that's the feeling I had with the person narrating. So I just decided to return it to the library and I'm physically reading it, which is why it's taking me 30 minutes to read maybe 10 pages or less. <laughs> At this point. just wanted to give you a little update. Congrats to me that I was able to finish this book because I really wanted to finish it before we went on our road trip and I did. Now I can pick up another book or two on my road trip. And the good thing about these road trips that we take when we do take family vacations we normally do like to take road trips. We normally like to take road trips because it's just easier to handle the kids that way opposed to being stuck in an airplane in an airport and doing all that and also we like driving. We like to be able to stop whenever we want and we're not just stuck at one place trying to handle the kids, you know. The main reason why I really like road trips is because I get a lot of reading done. I am lucky enough to be one of those people that haven't really gotten super dizzy and nauseous when you're reading a book in the car. The trip is going to be a four hour distance to and back from Santa's workshop. Do you know how many hours of solid uninterrupted reading I'm going to get? As soon as I put on my headphones, the kids can scream all they want. My husband listens to a podcast podcast with one headphone in his ear and it just enhances my all-time experience that much more when we're taking road trips because the time goes by a lot faster. I just feel lucky that we can do that and I can read my book and my husband listens to his podcast. I get so much reading done. Oh my gosh, it's like such a blessing for me. So that's another reason why I'm looking forward to this trip. I can't wait to see how many books. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to read a lot of books, but I can't wait to see how much I read.
So we're back home now we're back home from our trip it was so much fun we had a blast he had just had so much fun at Santa's workshop it was it was a great time definitely a really great family experience I figured before I close out this vlog I figured I'd share some new special edition books that I got recently and two boxes that arrived at my doorstep during our little vacation excuse the way I look we just literally got back unpacked and I haven't taken a shower yet so as soon as I'm done sharing and showing you my books then I will wash this hair 
that needs some good attention, okay? So I recently got my first owl crate box, my first October YA owl crate box, and I was so impressed with everything that I got with that box. I'm sorry I didn't I didn't share it or anything. I just wanted to open it and I had the best experience as far as my first box goes that I just want to show you the book and what it looks like and what they did to it because I feel like they did such an amazing job especially since in my vlog you saw we went to Barnes and Nobles well I touched and grabbed the original copy that Barnes had and oh my gosh this one that Owl Crate did, especially the color scheme that they did with this book and the quality of the pages and the sprayed edges. I think they're sprayed. I have a pamphlet to kind of tell you what all the customizations are. I had to get it because I have to show you guys. I wanted to do its justice and tell you all the great details that this book has and what Owl Crate did with it. So their November 2023 Young Adult Box was Perilous Travels. And obviously by looking at the artwork you kind of know what the book is and i'm so excited because when i unboxed this like it was just so beautiful i'm just so impressed with this especially for my first owl crate box those boxes are not cheap okay so i want to make sure i'm getting my money's worth with these special editions and man did they knock it out of the park their young adult november 2023 book is what the river knows by isabella ibanez look at this look at this beautiful beautiful just stunning book and it's so heavy you guys like compared to the original it is so heavy what i know about this book is it's a fantasy epic romance i think and it's set in egypt and there's adventure there's mystery it's about a girl who is trying to solve her parents death her parents got murdered and she's trying to solve who did it and along the way she meets this infuriating guy who happens to be her rival or something like that i'll read you the back but i just wanted to share it like look how beautiful this book is look what they did to this cover it is stunning with the foiling and just everything look how pretty that is oh my gosh i can't i'm blown away i'm blown away from my first look and the pages are like so thick and such high quality this book is literally so heavy compared to the original copy which was light this book knocks it out of the park like i said it is just so pretty look at the spine and then the back says the nile knows everything Look at the back. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful, you guys. They changed the color too. Like, it's it's stunning. Okay, look at those edges. Look at that. That is stunning. Oh my gosh. And then again here on the sides. It's just so pretty. Same thing on this side. It also comes with a ribbon bookmark and then the end it's just so beautiful oh my gosh i want to read this book because of just how beautiful it is so before i show you the naked cover it does have a reversible dust jacket so here's what this looks like i hope you can see it i know this is probably the worst lighting of the day but you see that and then when you get to the book itself like the naked cover look at that isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Look at that. The back. And then the end papers are illustrated, which again, I love. I love it so much. They just did such a great job. Oh, for my first book, I am so impressed, like highly impressed. I don't even know if that's the best way to describe it. It's also signed. This one is actually signed by the author, not digitally signed. So you can see that signed. And there's also an inbound letter from the author, which is really nice. It looks like she hand wrote it. Really, really cool. This book is so stunning and the pages themselves are so thick. I can't wait to get to it. So let me tell you what it's about. I have a couple more books to show you. So I'm going to try to make this quick, but I just can't rush this. Like, it's so beautiful. One thing I like about Alcrate is that they'll put the original cover, which is this right here. And then 
they'll put their version of the book over here so it, you can kind of see the difference on what they did. Our exclusive signed edition of What the River Knows features a gorgeous exclusive cover with stunning colorful stenciled edges. Turn over the cover for the reversible jacket with gorgeous artwork. We have some striking foil designs. You'll find gorgeous end pages. Finally, a letter and bonus content from the author herself is bound into the book just for our subscribers. Look at that. I'm just so impressed. So with that being said, I just received my November adult book only box from them that we're going to unbox. I'll get into that in a little bit. I wanted to show you what I got when we were at Flagstaff. I wanted to go to their barns there and we were lucky to find one inside their mall there. I wanted a signed copy just because I wanted to own a signed copy of a book from a different barns that's not here in Nevada. So I ended up getting Pierce Brown's Lightbringer. This is actually physically signed by the author. I own the first three books in the series. See, it's signed by the author. So I own the first three books in the series. I bought the Fairy Loot editions of those books, not signed, but I know that I'm gonna love this series and I've heard such great things about it. And I think this is a high fantasy sci-fi series and that's pretty much all I know about it. That's all I wanna know. I'm excited to get to this series. I think there's six books in the series. I own the first three and I think this is the last one if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, this is the part of the Red Rising series. This is the books that come after Red Rising if I'm not mistaken. So it's Red Rising. Rising, Golden Sun, Morning Star, Iron Gold, Dark Age, and Lightbringer. So I'm excited I got that on our trip. Let's get to unboxing this anticipated book because the artwork really caught my attention. It's a fantasy romance, I think. Their theme for November is Enchanted Forest Faded Mates. So I'm so excited. I want to see what Elkrate did to this with this one. I don't know what the book is, but they gave us a little synopsis of it and it sounds like it's right up my alley. So I'm super excited to see and we're going to open it together and I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. So I see the book and I don't want to see it yet. November adult fantasy theme is hidden in time. Look how pretty the colors are. I don't want to look at the back. Oh my gosh, this is so funny because I own this book from Book of the Month. I had no idea this is... Okay, let me show you. It's stunning though. It is very pretty. Gosh, it's gorgeous. I'll show you the original cover because I own it now. The Unmaking of June Faro by Adrian Young. Just look how pretty this is. For some reason, I thought this was going to be like a romance fantasy. And I thought this book was about like a murder or a mystery because I did read Adrian Young's uh, Spells for, what was it? Spells for Forgetting last year and that was Magical Realism. So what is this one? Okay, so here is the front of the book and then here's the spine and then the back says the next time you see the door open it. So I'm assuming this is also going to be magical realism. And then I just love these special editions. Like you guys have no idea. Okay. I don't even know where to start to show you. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's start with the smaller things first. Okay. It does come with a reversible dust jacket and it looks like this. How pretty is that? Just the colors that they used are stunning. Here is the naked cover. Oh my gosh. Look at these warm tones. Just look. It's so gorgeous. And then the back. It says Jasper Chronicles one year later. Still no answers. Oh, so it, yeah, it's like a mystery novel and then the sprayed edges are just red i'm not even looking at you guys i'm so sorry so pretty and the end papers again with this artwork so beautiful so stunning oh my gosh the one on the back 
Oh, it's so pretty. I don't think this one has a ribbon in it. Again, there is an inbound letter from the author. And this one, I don't know if it's physically signed or if it's digitally signed. But we have that. Wow. Let me show you what the original looks like. Before we get into that, let me just read you the little blurb of the book. A woman risks everything to end her family's centuries-old curse, solve her mother's disappearance, and find love in this mesmerizing novel. It's pretty much all I need to know. But wow, is that gorgeous. Just the colors that they used are so stunning so pretty this is the original cover this i bought this was what released in october 2023 this is book of the month's original cover and this is alcrates how pretty how pretty is that here is the difference completely a redesigned cover exclusive cover reversible dust jacket fully printed hardcover case illustrated end paper signed by the author author letter bound into the book bonus content bound into the book and sprayed edges i have two copies now <laughs> And then next month's theme is The Dark Devours. And I'm excited about that. This is the young adult theme. So those are all the special edition books. And for this one, I really didn't tell you what this is about, but the little blurb says, Expertly plotted, explosively adventurous, and burning with romance. So there's that. And then the last thing that I received is my YA Once Upon a Book Club October. I think this is my October box. And this one, they don't do special edition covers or anything like that, but they do books signed by authors, newly released books, and they're signed by authors, usually with a signed plate. And this one was, it's so cute, just their theme. This one is Allie Hazelwood's new YA debut novel. And it looks like this, look how pretty. Let me show you the book. It is Checkmate by Allie Hazelwood. I now can say that I've owned all of Allie Hazelwood's books. I've only read one, but I own all of them. This one seems short and sweet, and this is her young adult debut novel. This is the perfect rivals to lovers romance. Say no more. This is what the box looks like. Look how pretty it is with all the themes. So we have page 341. We have page 296 page 157 and we have page seven my battery just died so i'm so sorry about that but that's basically it those are all my packages that i received during the week i'm so excited to get to all these books and i'm so happy that i'm starting to accumulate special edition books because they just i love books okay not only do i love reading books but i do also enjoy collecting them as well. So that's it for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and I will catch you on my next one. Bye!